So I had some of you guys ask me if I could make a video about how I lit and shot the fake Sport Check commercial, which I actually called it Sport Co. And I didn't know that was a real company, but it turns out it's a real sports company. So I guess I made a free commercial for them. <laughs> but nonetheless, you guys were asking how I filmed it, how I lit it. So let's talk about that. So before we can actually talk about how we film this, let's talk about the pre-production because I think that's just as important leading into how we film things. So the pre-production for this started out with me coming up with some type of story for my basketball player. A, I knew I wanted to shoot something basketball related. I knew Tom who plays basketball and he's actually really good at playing basketball. So I was like, let's get him. He'll be cool. And I kind of had this idea of this lone basketball player going out to visualize himself shooting hoops and just sinking them in the net and really visualizing how he's gonna go and practice and hyping himself up. So that was basically the story. The second thing that was important to the pre-production of this commercial was what was the style gonna be? I love Nike style commercials, sport check commercials, sports commercials, and funny enough I don't play any sports. The only sports I ever did was competitive rock climbing. I've never played like hockey or baseball or basketball, but I love filming action. I think it's super exciting to film that. The the third thing I had to do was location scout. I had to go find a location and I was actually lucky enough that Tom, my subject, said he has a court that he goes and practices at all the time and they have lights up at night so you can practice and I said oh that's great so the first thing I did was I checked it out during the day to see maybe if I want to film it in the morning so I went there kind of in midday and I checked on my Sunseeker app if you don't know about Sunseeker it's an amazing app that you can track the Sun from morning till night from your specific location so there's no guesswork about where the Sun's gonna be so I went and checked out the location the basketball court looked great and I kind of came to the conclusion that I think I want to film this at night I want this to be moody I want it to be dramatic and I think using the basketball court lights will do that. The final thing was booking an actual day to film this on or at night uh, in our case. So I needed to check my weather apps. I always do this when I'm scheduling a shoot. I'm checking weather apps constantly. You want to be checking your weather apps so when you're booking your day you know what to anticipate in terms of weather. So we've done our pre-production, we have our day scheduled, now we're gonna go shoot. So we've decided we're gonna film Tom playing basketball at night at the basketball courts when the lights are on. And the lights are on at the court from 8 till 10 p.m. at night. So we got there at 8.30, so we only had an hour and a half to shoot this, so it was a very fast shoot. I was working by myself, other than Ian, who was filming my behind-the-scenes footage for the commercial we made for creating your own sound effects. But the biggest thing I ran into when filming this was I planned on using the court lights. There was four court lights. There was one light at one basketball net, one light at another basketball net, and two lights across from each other on either side of the middle of the basketball court. So we had four lights total. So basically we had four key lights lighting from all angles, which caused a huge problem, which I didn't think of in terms of shadows. So it seemed no matter where I turned, I was seeing my shadow. So what I ended up having to do was shoot as low as I could from the ground up so we wouldn't see my shadow on the ground. And that actually ended up working up in my favor because it was kind of this hero look for Tom. This commercial lighting setup was really simple. I didn't bring any lights, I didn't bring any bounce, I didn't bring anything. I just brought two lenses. I brought the Takina 11 to 16 with the Metabone Speed Booster, which makes it F2. And I brought my 24 to 105 with the Speed Booster, makes it an F2.8 Canon lens. So I had these two lenses and I pretty much shot the whole thing on the Takina 11 to 16. The really cool thing about the, the Takina lens, which I didn't anticipate, was I got these great long lens flares that kind of looked like kind of anamorphic, where the flare was kind of crossing the whole screen. And I really thought it looked cool and I really didn't anticipate it. So it's something I want to use on future shoots. I knew I wanted to use a wide angle lens for the action of this commercial because I really wanted you to feel like you were right there with Tom so we could really feel the action of his fast movements when he was dribbling or shooting, etc. So one important thing here is I wanted the action in the film to feel very fast and very real so I changed my shutter angle to 90 degrees which allows you to have more staccato 
feeling with the film. There isn't as much motion blur like if I had it at 180 degrees. When I shot the slow motion stuff, I had changed it back to 180 degrees, but when I was shooting the real time stuff, it was all 90 degrees. And in addition to that, I was very close to Tom, so we could really feel the action and be right there with him when he was shooting. And I really think it worked well. The biggest thing I had to learn as a cinematographer was backlighting. And I don't know why it took me so long to realize that things look so much more beautiful and cinematic when you have the light behind your subject or your object that you're filming to create cinematic footage. And it's it's just about creating shadow and depth, giving your footage this depth, opposed to if I had Tom lit by the street lights from the front of his face, it would look very flat. There wouldn't be any depth. There's no shadow. There's no dimension. It was very important when I was filming this commercial to keep the light behind Tom when we were filming, no matter where we were filming. Now, obviously in some cases, because there was four key lights on the basketball court, it was hard to keep the light behind him. But I think I did a really good job with keeping the light behind him, considering the fact that there was four key lights on the basketball court and I was really happy with how it turned out. There was actually a lot of different depth and shadow coming from the four different lights depending on the angle that I chose. So I think the takeaway here is whenever you're filming, try to get that light behind your subject. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it answers your questions about how I film this commercial for my subscribers out there that requested this video. If you're new to the channel and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe, hit that like button. It really helps me out. We'd love to have you on board and we'll see you in the next video. Peace. Guard me. Can't guard me.